Pricing by Dr. Melissa Cohen. The agenda of this short class is to look at the definition, look at some examples, some action items, followed by a conclusion. So pricing. Pricing is the amount of money that the customer is willing to pay for the product or service. As far as pricing strategy, we need to look at how the pricing strategy is going to determine how you plan to price your product or service in the market. So there are specific ways on pricing strategy and best do that to maximize your profit for your company, your small business. Pricing strategy also sends a message to the customers based on value and quality. For example, high value and high quality product or service equivalent to a higher priced product, such as a luxury good. However, on the flip side, if you have a low value and a low quality product or service, that is equal to a low priced everyday item. For example, you cannot take salt. <laughs> it's a low value, low quality item, low priced everyday item. However, if you wanted to create a premium brand, and charge more for it, you can certainly try to do that, but you also have to realize what the market demands are and such. However, let's go back to the high value, high quality product. If you want to create a product that is unique and such, uh, especially if it's technology based, maybe handmade leather product, you know, it can range from different items there. You can make it high value, high quality, it can be a high value, high quality product, and therefore you can charge a higher price. However, down the road, if it falls apart or consumers don't believe that it is high priced and it warrants the high price, they'll stop buying it. And then obviously y that doesn't suit you as well either. Now there's a couple of different ways we can price our products when we're looking at, well, how much do we want to sell this for? So one aspect of this is called cost-based pricing. Cost-based pricing is based on the cost to the company for creating the product plus a markup. So we're going to look at how much does it cost me to make it or the company to make it and then we're going to add a specific markup. Now the markup can either be a percentage or it can just be a specific value. It can be uh, a percentage is like oh 40 percent, 100 percent, 20 percent. The specific value can be, say, I know $20, $100, $1,000. That's what those mean. And also, you also, when you're looking at this and determining which is the best way for cost-based pricing, is to, um, is based on the industry and the market that you're in. Or it can simply just be at your own discretion. But I would really caution that you would do at least some research and see, well, how are other people pricing the products in the market? What are they pricing? What are they offering uh, as far as value and benefits and features? What are you offering that is different? So can you actually charge more money because you have better features and better products than the competitor? So here, once again, is another example of a markup. It can be a percentage or a specific value. So when you're doing your research, if you find that the industry typically has a 20% margin, then this is the percentage. So then you would figure out what is your cost to actually make its product, the cost of goods and such. So say that each good costs $5 for you to make it. So therefore, a 20% markup would be $1. And so $5 cost plus $1 markup is $6 is the price to the consumer that you would charge. Now, besides cost-based pricing, you can also look at value-based pricing. And so this is a second pricing strategy. Value-based pricing is based on the amount that the customer is willing to pay for the product or service. And value-based pricing may be determined by market research. So basically with value-based, we don't even look at how much it costs the company to make it. Obviously, we're going to charge more than the cost, but we're not using that as the, the measurement. We're going to go out into the market and we are going to look at what the competitors are selling, what values and features that they're selling on their product. We're going to look at how much can we sell our product for. Are we 
Is our product better than the competition? If so, then we can probably charge more money for it. And that is how you get your market research. You basically just go out and see what other features similar to what your product is offering and selling and then seeing what people are willing to pay for it as well. So when you're determining which pricing strategy to use, you know, do I use cost-based versus value-based? So um, some of the things, there are a couple of features and things you may also want to consider when you're doing this. So cost-based versus value-based should be determined by the highest profit potential with realistic sales in the market. So if you are going to get more money by doing a cost-based pricing strategy, then go that way. However, if you are a new product out there, something new that consumers want, then a value-based may be creating the highest profit potential. Let's go back to the example where we had the $5 cost plus a 20% markup, which is, and then ended up being a $6 total price to the customer. Well, let's just say it is a new fancy pen, and it does something fancy. <laughs> a new feature that this pen has that's in the market. Well, instead of saying $5 plus a 20% markup, we'll say, hey, you know, this pen has a brand new feature. No one else has it. This is something I know consumers want. The, the most expensive pen I see out there with realistic sales, so we're looking at, say, middle-class consumers who are willing to pay $10 for a pen, but it is the smoothest writing pen ever. It has a ink lasts forever. It's got a great grip on it, whatever the feature may be. I think we can sell this for $10. So now we still have a $5 cost, but now we have a $5 profit margin. So that's going to be your high, that you will get a higher profit margin, which is the $5, using a value-based versus looking at the cost base, which would have been just the $1 profit. And as we mentioned before, with realistic sales in the market, <laughs> most entrepreneurs are very optimistic of how much, uh, how many units that they will sell in the market in a very short time period, and sometimes it doesn't work like that. So you do have to look at what are the realistic sales, what are the true long-term sales of maybe the entire product over you know five, ten, fifteen years, even if you know if a product has that long of a life cycle. Now, one other thing to note about this is if the product offers many new features, then the perceived value of the product may be much higher than other the products in the market. And the company can price the product higher and therefore receive higher profit margins. Another aspect of pricing strategy that you need to consider are the price to quality signals. So this is the price of a product signals to the customer the quality of the product or service. So once again, we'll use our luxury goods of uh, uh, per women's purses, Michael Kors, uh, a Birkin bag, that sort of thing. So if it's a high-priced product, it's going to signal a high-quality product as well. If you're going to pay 500 to a, you know a couple thousand dollars for a woman's purse, that's going to signal high quality. However, on the flip side of that, you have a low price product signals a low quality product. If you, we go into a mass merchandiser like Walmart or Target or Myers or anything like that, and you're buying a woman's purse and it's twenty dollars, it's going to a low price signals a low quality. Now, on the consumer side of this, they may think, okay, that's a great value for what I within my price point of twenty to thirty dollars. However, someone who's spending $1,000 for a, a purse will look at that and say, oh, that's low quality, low price, I'm not paying for that. So you do have to think of it in those terms as well, of who the consumer is and who your target market is as well. And as I mentioned before, one item to note when you're looking about the price quality signals is that it's very dangerous for, uh, for the small business owner or the company to price the product as a high price, high quality product when it does not meet customer expectations. So you really have to see what's out there in the market, look at who you're targeting as a target consumer and see what products are available to them. So if it's not, if you want to make your product a high quality 
high price and it turns out to not be a high quality high price that's very hurtful to your business in the long term so you definitely want to avoid that as well so another consideration when you're looking at your pricing strategy is if you are in doubt over a price range price your product on the higher side so remember it is easier to lower a price or offer discounts and promotions to entice customers than it is to increase a price afterwards after the fact so uh, I, do, I do want to caution this to make sure that you don't price your product so high nobody wants to buy it but I would say most entrepreneurs especially starting out have a tendency to not price their products what the market will value them for or they go to Walmart and they say okay there's a cup on the shelf and it's eight dollars I'm going to create the special cup I'm gonna sell it for twelve dollars well that's probably not the best pricing strategy if it's got a special feature and a new feature you probably want to charge a lot more like why is a Yeti cup thirty forty dollars when Walmart sells a similar type product for eight to ten dollars that's something you need to consider as well so another thing to look at is if you're selling a fifty dollar product you can offer a one-time promotion you can offer special discounts or other uh, promotions to lower it to forty dollars especially when you're first starting out you're trying to gain awareness you're trying to gain marketing that may be one pricing strategy that you may need you may go to one website and say hey you know your promotion for that may be hey customer if you buy this product before you know within the next three days we're offering a discount you can get a forty dollar product or a fifty dollar product for forty dollars buy now buy now that's a that's a promotion you can offer now remember if you start selling a product at fifty dollars but the true cost plus the markup should be seventy dollars it is harder to convince existing customers to pay more for the product so let's say you start selling the product at fifty dollars because you think um, I just want to get my name out there I want to get people introduced to the product I need to make some money right I've already bought I've got a hundred cups sitting in my garage here or a thousand cups I need to recover some of this money I've already output but if it really costs you seventy dollars to make the product then you need to be selling it more than seventy dollars say a hundred dollars so once people start buying it at fifty dollars and then you're like okay great okay I've got I've got a hundred sales so far I, I think this is a great product I think people are gonna really buy it my names I've got some momentum going out on there my name the company name the company brand is getting out into the marketplace people are starting to buy it up um, I have some interest from some like say possibly news media now I'm gonna make it but I'm gonna make it a hundred dollars because I know how popular it is well then you have to realize you're gonna alienate your existing customers who bought it for fifty dollars as well or to buy tell people say okay you've been buying it fifty dollars but all of a sudden I'm just gonna jack up the price to a hundred dollars so these are just a couple of items that you just need to think about when you're doing your market research like what's going on and you know there's no definitive answer unfortunately you can't just check mark off what I, you know what what uh, what to do and some easy list and, and have a successful business because it's going to vary as I said what is the industry what is the market is it a tech technological excuse me technological product where there's uh, quick turnover a lot of development people are willing to pay more money or is it just a very old I don't want to say old but a very stable industry where there's just slow growth you're not going to spend a lot of money in a slow growth industry for a business so some action items we need to look at what you need to do when you're considering pricing either a new product a new uh, whether you're a small business owner or whether you're a corporation so we first of all research your industry does it use cost-based pricing or does it use value-based pricing you need to look at what are the typical margin percentages if you can find this information out even in magazine articles you can sometimes find a little bit of information in press releases such as the, the annual report if it's a uh, company that has stock on the market 
uh, through like the New York Stock Exchange and some of these other exchanges, they have to produce these SEC documents. And sometimes they'll give some information out about margins and such. I do a lot of research. A lot of the writers, the financial writers, when they're doing their um, synopsis, um, when these annual reports come out or the quarterly financials come out, these financial writers will also write some information and they're they're doing in research on the whole industry as well. So you may be, get, may be able to get some great information from those financial writers as well. You also need to look at what new features does your product offer over the competition and how much are people willing to pay for it. If it's just one little feature, then they're not going to pay as much. But as if it's really fantastic and it offers a lot of great things, they may be willing to pay more. Another action item you can consider is using a survey method to determine how much customers would be willing to pay for your product. You can ask your friends, you can ask your family. Uh, you can also just do surveys on social media now and get a little bit of feedback. Obviously, you know, from a scientific quantitative analysis side, it may be skewed and it may not represent true value of the population. There, but it will give you, if you're just especially a small business owner, some idea of how much customers would be willing to pay for your product. Another action item is you need to investigate you know, or decide, will you use the cost-based or are you going to use a value-based pricing for your product? And finally, you have to determine what is the final price of your product? How much are you going to charge your customers for your product? And that is Pricing by Dr. Melissa Cohen. Thank you.